And joining us now is Mikhail Ziegler, the founding editor-in-chief of Russia's only independent TV channel, TV Rain. He's also the author of the book War and Punishment, Putin and Zelensky and the Path to Russia's Invasion of Ukraine. Mikhail, thanks for being with us again. First, my condolences to you. Thank I know you. that you worked so closely with Alexei Navalny. You, you got an email from him just before he died. Well, what did he write to you? <clears throat> that was not an email, obviously. That was, that was a physical letter, handwritten letter. It was a very long one, and we, dis we used to discuss anything, starting from Russian literature, Dostoevsky, Nabokov, Solzhenitsyn. Uh, but mo most importantly, yes, it was very energetic, very um, cheerful. Uh, he was trying to support, funny enough, he was trying to support me and, and um, convincing me to support all other Russian immigrants. And we were discussing actually uh, my my next book about uh, the collapse of Soviet Union. He wrote that uh, uh, it's such a tragedy that we lost our historic opportunity to become uh, a democratic country. But um, he wrote that it's it's very it's crucial not to lose uh, the next opportunity to make Russia a democracy once uh, Putin's regime is going to collapse. We all saw the the video of him in court the day before he died, looking relatively healthy, given the circumstances of his imprisonment and how solitary and he was healthy. what had done to him. So what do you think happened? I think he was killed. I think uh, I'm, I'm scared to think of the way how he, he could have been killed, because um, obviously it was a decision made by Putin. and. I'm not surprised that they they do not uh, release his body to his parents. It, uh, I'm afraid that probably uh, we will never see the body because I have very uh, deep concern. I'm very concerned about uh, the way how they were killing him. I can suspect that he might have been tortured or something something worse because once once they decided to kill him, I think everything uh, might have been possible. Do you think that they are holding his body so long and not turning it over to his mother because they use Novichok and they're trying to detoxify his body and uh, destroy any evidence? I think, I think that's the, be the best case scenario because death uh, of Novichok is, um, is not so, uh, is not a torture. I'm afraid that something, something worse could have happened to him. And the United States, President Biden is preparing to sanction Russia on Friday, announce new sanctions. Some of the sanctions, we're told, might be for individuals, for people involved in, the, in that prison system, in that gulag. Do you think there's ever any way that any of these people will be held accountable, including Vladimir Putin? No, I hope. That's... that's, uh, that's that's what uh, um, Alexei's widow, Yulia, said, that, uh, that she's sure that one day uh, they're going to be accountable for that. I hope to see them in court. I think that the personal sanctions uh, are needed, and that's, uh, that's something Alexei has always um, appealed for. At the same time, unfortunately, we, we have to face the truth that, uh, in general, most of the sanctions uh, um, uh, implemented uh, during the last uh, two years are not working. Russian economy is is a, in a rather good shape. Um, there, there is no catastrophe, um, and yeah, uh, the Russian elite uh, thinks that that Putin is winning. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, Russian big business, uh, all those people who were strongly against the war in the beginning of the war um, were somehow pushed back to Russia. So I think uh, that was uh, some, some kind of mistake uh, to, to, um, to push back Russian big business and to make, to make it support Vladimir Putin. And finally, I know uh, the last thing on your, on your mind is probably American politics, but the leading candidate for the Republican nomination Donald Trump, who flies around on his own jet and lives in a, you know, a mansion in Florida and another mansion in New Jersey and, and all of that, and a penthouse in New York. He is saying that he is a victim, that he's a victim of the American court system, the prosecutors, the way Alexei Navalny is a victim. That, how does that comparison strike you? 
No, I think it doesn't matter what, what we think, uh, what American voters think that matters. And if American voters think that um, all those trials and indictments uh, make him look like a victim, that would matter. And if all those trials increase his popularity, that that would be a very bad sign. Um, and at, this, at the same time, I know that uh, um, for, for people in Russia, for Vladimir Putin, uh, that's very important. I think that he, he thinks that the time is on his side. He's not um, willing to, um, to start another assault in Ukraine, for example, because he thinks that he doesn't need to do that. He's waiting for Trump uh, to be back in the White House. And he th probably, I'm not sure, I, I think he won't exchange uh, all the um, American citizens um, um, held like, like hostages, uh, like Ivan Gershkovich, uh, until the moment uh, Trump's, uh, Trump is going back to the White House. That's, that's his plan, unfortunately. Mikhail Ziker, a friend and a close associate of Alexei Navalny. Thank you very much.